Hey, it's Dima. Welcome back to 24 Hours Inside. Today we're here with... Hi, my name's Nikita. Nikita, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, your career, and everything in depth? Okay, um, so what I do is nothing at the moment, but I'm trying to break into the mobile development field. Um, I finished General Assembly, which I believe is what we're going to be talking about today. Yep. Um, and right now, I'm just trying to gain experience so I can find myself a job and actually work in the field that I'm aiming to go into. So mobile development, is there a certain language you do mobile development, Android, iPhone? So specifically, uh, when I say mobile development, I actually mean Android development, uh, not iOS. Mm. So I went to General Assembly for Android development, which uses Java, but you can have you can use other languages depending on the software that you use to create the apps. Um, but I just know Java. So why Android as opposed to iOS? So Android as opposed to iOS because well, first of all, I have an Android phone. Second of all, um, prior to going to General Assembly, I did a short course on Udemy, it's an online site um, for Android development, and got a small taste of it there. So then once I found out about General Assembly, I decided to, it was a choice between data science with Python or Android development, and I thought, one of those sound a little more fun than the other, so I just went with Android development. That's fair. And did you gain a lot of knowledge through the Udemy course? What did it prepare you at all for General Assembly or So the Udemy course helped me get some of the basic stuff. It got me really familiar with just like the simple elements of Android development. Um, so coming into the course, I was able to actually understand a lot of stuff. I got a little bit of a head start. Uh, but as we went further and further through the course, uh, I started to learn that the stuff that I learned through the Udemy course was actually not the way you were supposed to do most of the stuff. Like so it got counterintuitive? Huh? Counterintuitive, kind of? Well, it's not, uh, I, I wouldn't say it was counterintuitive, it's, it got the job done, but it's not the right way for it to get done. Like, there's some things, like it's not the industry standard, I guess. In the sense it was, it took longer to do more complicated code, or? It wasn't longer necessarily, I think if anything it might have been a little bit shorter. Um, one example that I could think of, I don't know if this means anything, but putting an on-click listener in the XML file as opposed to the logic uh, in the Java file. So what that does is you're actually mixing in the logic with the design, which you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to try to keep them separated. Uh, on on-click listener is when if you click on something, it does a bit of code. Oh, as uh, like a button kind of. It can be a button, it could be an image, it could be text. Like in Excel, right? If you click on something, it, does, it runs a macro or it creates some sort of process? Possibly. I don't, I've never made macros on Excel, so I have Okay. <laughs> Two different coding languages, kind of, not really. Excel's more spreadsheets. Yeah. It's a bit of a stretch to call it a coding language, but all right. No, it, it, <laughs> it has macros. Enough. That's uh, SQL yeah, you, related. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Any I'll of take it. your word for it. <laughs> I don't know if it's SQL, but I'll take your word for it. We won't fact check that at all. <laughs> all right. Um, so, what about prior to Udemy? Did you have any experience at all with? You said it was a little Java. Right. So, okay. So my first. Expo so my first exposure to uh, programming was in college. Went to Hunter College for a psychology degree. Uh, didn't do anything with that. Um, but while there, I decided to take a computer science course. I think it was either a requirement or just something I wanted to do. So I took a computer science course, and along with it, I took a course on Python. It was just like a short course to learn Python. Um, and yeah, from there I started to play around with Python, did a few things here and there. I actually made an app. Oh. I, yeah, I made a few small apps, not nothing really serious. Um, but again, that was... <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Um, <laughs> That was nothing very serious. It was just like, just really a taste of programming. 
And then I got more interested, came back to it, because I was bouncing around from shitty job to sh shitty job. And decided to do the Udemy course, and then... Got the General blah, Assembly. Blah, blah. Yeah, so I met somebody, well, a friend of mine, she finished General Assembly, uh, but she finished it for web development. Uh, so... I kind of, pretty much I was looking around at different places, and then I saw that she went to General Assembly, so I'm like, you know what, she went there, she seemed to have worked fine for her, so I went to General Assembly, as opposed to the other ones. And how much did you pay for the course? How long was it? The course was $13,000, no, $13,500. Uh, it's a 12-week course, and you're in the classroom. Essentially, it's like a full-time job. You're there for 35 hours a week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, it's 9 to 5, and then Wednesdays, it's 9 to 12, because everybody needs that half day. Sure, Wednesday's the best time. Feels like a weekend. It obviously feels like a weekend. Well, it divides the days up, so that yeah. actually works really good. Um, but yeah, even though it's like 35 hours, they, they do assign like some pretty serious homework, so... On top of that, you actually have to do stuff outside of the classroom to get all the homework done. Um, all in all, there's a lot of time spent in the building and just working in general. Did you enjoy the process? Did you enjoy the outcome? What's your... So it was a really fun course. Uh, everybody in my class, we had a really small class for Android development. There was, uh, I think, like 13 students. Wow. As opposed to web development, which had about 60 in a class. Huge so, difference. Yeah, it was it was a huge difference. So we got to know each other pretty well, you know, all the students. Um, teachers. We got to know each other pretty well, so it was pretty cool just hanging out with everybody every day. Um, I learned a lot very quickly. And yeah, now, what was the question? That was, did I overstep the question? Yet? No, no, you're just going into more detail. That's what we're basically asking. Okay, Keep so going. yeah, now basically I just do some programming here and there, trying to fill out my portfolio with the stuff I learned. Uh, and start finding a job soon enough. Did you create any? Did you create any apps or projects in the class? What about after class? What are you currently working on? So in the class, we made for every lesson that we had. Usually, we had like two lessons a day. We made like mini apps, basically just to test um, the concepts that we learned for the day. Then, aside from that, we had four major projects that we were supposed to do. The first one was a simple Java thing. I think it was uh, rocks, paper, scissors. Then I believe we did a tic-tac-toe thing. Then we did a fake mobile commerce storefront. Oh, uh, then it was a group project that we worked, combined a whole bunch of different APIs. Me and my group, we made um, a restaurant let app which basically the idea is to help people find out new places that they haven't been to around their area. So Yelp. It's yeah, so that was one of the APIs we Wait, used. Wait, are you creators Yelp? of the Yelp? Hmm? Are you Yelp creators? No. No, we're not. No. If we were Yelp creators, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. Well that's why you don't need a job anymore, right? Yeah, that's exactly why I don't I definitely need a job. If you're watching and you're hiring, please Please hire me. I will program for you. Um, but yeah, so for the app, the group project, uh, we worked with Yelp, Uber, uh, Wait, you worked with Twitter, the AP uh, APIs. We worked with their APIs. Okay, but we didn't work with them, like with the team or anything. Um, essentially, our idea was we wanted to have a thing where basically. You pick something that you like, like say Chinese food. Sure. Uh, and then you would click a button, and what it would do is just pick a random Chinese food place nearby, okay. based on like parameters, like you set your price range, stuff like that. And the idea was an Uber, it would just call an Uber for you, the Uber would come, you would just count, go into the car, you okay. wouldn't know where you're going until you actually get there. That was the idea. Unfortunately, you can't do that. But, no. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no. So you take an Uber, you have no clue where you're going, yes. 
That was the idea and we couldn't do it. Okay. <laughs> I see the reason why. But we ended up doing something a little bit different. It was a lot less extreme. Um, do they know where they're going this time? E kind of. Um, so what it ended up doing, it still randomized it and it picked a random spot for you. Uh, and it just gave you a pinpoint on the map. Mm. It just omitted the name, so you can't see what that place is, but it tells you where you went. Where, I think where you go. Oh, that's uh, kind of cool. Yeah, so it's not as extreme, so obviously not as cool. Uh, of course. But there's that. And then there was another feature that I did most of the work on, but uh, uh, it was essentially a date night feature. The idea is you start off an itinerary, so you use the LP API, you pick a place, like, Say you want to start off at a restaurant. Sure. You pick a place with a restaurant, then you set a next thing. So what it does is it, let's say your second place you want to do bowling. Sure. So for the first place you do the restaurant, and then what it does is it looks for bowling places out around the area of the restaurant that you pick. So you could go to bowling, and then it keeps doing that based on like the last place that you were. So does it choose the first? So does it take all places into consideration first, and then choose the restaurant, and then choose the bowling? No, you pick the order of the itinerary. So Okay. Then you pick what places you want to go to. So for instance, let's say restaurant is 20th Street and 3rd Avenue and the bowling is then what? Somewhere near there. Okay, so it would go based on that. Yeah. What is so like even if you're coming from another borough. Sure. So that the idea is you don't necessarily know, maybe you know like a restaurant in you said 20th and 3rd. Yeah. Maybe you know a restaurant there, but you don't know like the rest of the neighborhood there. So you don't want to end up researching everything there. So you just use the app and get the restaurant and then go from there to bowling. And then from bowling, you could go do karaoke at night and at the night with like some... Uh, That's actually pretty cool. The clubbing. So why isn't this on the App Store? Uh, well, it was a group project, so... I would have to speak with my group if, it, if they're cool with me, me publishing it. I may, I think, yeah, I don't know. I'll consider... I think it's actually a really good idea. Yeah, if anything, I'll just take it out of the rest of the group project then. Since you did 75% of the work. Since you, I did most of the work. You might as well just change whatever they put in, put in your own code and... No, we, just, we kept everything separate because of the way that we worked together. Cool. Yeah. So overall, class was worth it for you. Although uh, you don't currently have a job right now, it did teach you a whole a lot of stuff that you weren't able to obtain on your own. Or if you oh, did, yeah. it would take you more yeah, than three months. So if you definitely more than three months, if you are trying to learn all this stuff by yourself, you are going to be lost just so completely lost you'll you'll get there maybe maybe listen i'm not a genius i don't know but um you can't do this in three months by yourself because you need guidance unless if you get like a mentor uh it's gonna take you a year or two just to get what i got in like three months yeah that's a big difference it's a huge difference so so in that case I guess how do they help you well, after you take the classes how do they help you get the job and what steps do so, you need to take to progress so further? what they have um, they have what's called an outcomes team uh, the outcomes team is essentially uh, I guess like they give one of guidance counselors I don't know I've never actually went to a guidance counselor in school so I assume maybe that it, it, the idea is that they're supposed to help you get into the job market. Um, now what they do is they help you write up resumes, they help you um, help you with cover letters, interviewing, that kind of stuff. Like is they don't there... actually look for jobs for you. If jobs come their way, like if, uh, for example, uh, a company was looking to hire some Android developers, so they saw that we were graduating. They offered a bunch of positions, like I think it was intern positions, mm. uh, just to our class. So that opportunity was forwarded to us individually if we wanted to apply to it. Paid or not paid? It was paid. I don't think it was paid a lot. I think it was like three months. So then after Punch that, up. maybe you could get on, but who knows. 
Yeah, but so that the thing with the outcomes team is in order to stay on um, outcomes eligible, you need to send out like ten resumes a week, go to two meetups a month. check in with them like every week or something I just I just didn't feel it I mean, it's very dissuading looking at all the job qualifications where it's like you need one or two apps published uh, entry-level positions looking for two to five years experience in the field two to five years experience with a different language you need a master's or bachelor's in computer science that kind of stuff which you're going to have so so I decided just to work on my portfolio because it seemed a better use of time for myself so any published apps uh, I have some few published apps we'll add them later to just the... click here right here the graphic is gonna go right here what he said I... right here <laughs> And we'll list them down in the description below so you can download and check out Nikita's portfolio. Uh, so, any final words of wisdom for people who want to do Android or maybe take general summary class? Would you recommend it? Which one perhaps maybe not Android? Just your final words. So, I don't know about the other schools. Um, if you're looking to get into this field, I do recommend going to one of the boot camps. Uh, but do take with a grain of salt. If you don't have any experience in the field, it might take you a while to actually get a job. Um, we had one guy in my class, he got really lucky. He actually sent out 60, he told me like 68 resumes he sent out. But he didn't end up getting a job because of the resumes. He ended up getting a job because they liked his final project. Um, Which was? He made a multiplayer Sudoku app. It's called oh. So You Can Doku. So he ended up, yeah, getting a job because of that. Um, and then we had another guy who got a job, but it's in Denver and he got the job because he had prior experience in the field. He was like a technical recruiter. Uh, so yeah, if, just take it with a grain of salt um, and you're going to probably need some burn money after you get out of it, unless if you want to just take part-time jobs while you get more experience. Also, networking is very important. Network. Ah, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Good luck out there and we'll post your app so maybe people can reach out to you. Alright, bye guys.